Welcome to day two of my coverage of the 2023 Scrabble Players Championship, Las Vegas, Nevada. Day one ended okay. Uh, started off well, then took a little bit of a dip. And at the end of the day, as you'll see up here on the top right of the screen, I think it's the top right. Uh, after seven rounds, we're now at round eight. Record is five and two minus 43 spread. So I'm gonna have some work to do with regards to the spread department. Uh, it's definitely not a good thing to be negative spread when you have three uh, more wins than you have losses. So yeah, um, the format of the tournament, uh, just to remind everybody, it's 28 games, um, 28 initial games over four days, so seven games a day. And after 28 games, the two top players, uh, based on wins and also potentially by point differential, uh, qualify to play in the finals the next day, which is a best of five, whereas everybody else the next day plays three more games. And after those three games, third place, fourth place, fifth place is all crowned. So, um, yeah, all you need to do to win nationals is finish second after 28 games and then beat your opponent in the best of five. Uh, so not as important necessarily to have spread, but still a very important thing. Um, and in round eight, I was faced against uh, Mike Krentz, a very strong expert player from... Uh, the Bay Area. Also, uh, I forgot to show the final board position, um, just the photo of the board for round seven, so that's right here. Uh, not here, but here. Excuse me for that. Wrong scene. Um, so to my left, you see the theremin board, the incredible uh, winning play, and of course the UNT not very nicely placed on the board, which is a clear indication of how tense the end of this game was and the result of which was uh, very surprising. Um, of course, cards was not the play on the board, um, but I forgot to take the S back off. Oh, now you guys are going to come up with some conspiracies. I forgot to take the S off of uh, the board, but basically immediately after round seven, if you watched yesterday's video, uh, Eric said, if I play cards, do I win? I said, yes. So like he put the S on the board, he's like, does this win? I said, yes. Anyways, um, so I guess maybe it wasn't even worth showing the final position because this wasn't the final position. In any case, uh, let's get rid of this and start the game against Mike. So I was going first in this game and I played so the same thing yesterday. This takes like, has some memory issues. It's taking a while to make the first move. So I clicked twice. All right, uh, so I played Kat, uh, standard play keeping W-A-D-E. And Mike responds uh, after a while with Vivor. Clearly, he didn't have an I uh, to overlap with the Q, which was lucky for me. And it's important to note that there are two positionings of Vivor. You can also play Vivor on the right side. You might think there's not a big difference between the two, but there is a pretty big difference between the two. This placement uh, allows a lot more plays to the triple because you can hook an R this way with an A for R, an E for ER, and an O for OR. So a lot more words will fit just based on the fact that you can put three vowels uh, versus only one after this positioning of before, uh, where RE is the only two letter word starting with R. And another difference is that this before will somewhat inhibit the QI spot 
but we'll create some play on the right side with maybe A overlaps. Uh, and it's potentially a little bit easier to overlap on the left side as well with an A here or with a U as well. Uh, however, uh, by playing before here, you are opening yourself up for some potentially hefty overlaps, making QI or just easy dumping plays. But the ET makes it a lot harder. But these are the little things that really define um, top expert play. It's not so much like finding all the words. Um, it's really about the little things. This is what separates a 1900 player from an 1800 player, 1800 player from a 1700 player. Just these little things that they are much less likely to get wrong. So this play of Bavor, in my opinion, is definitely the stronger candidate uh, just because it makes it a lot harder to play to the triple. Uh, so Bavor comes down, and with this rack, I missed a play. I couldn't really find anything great here. I saw Woof. I saw that I could even play Woofed for a little bit more, but ultimately decided it was worth scoring a lot more points by playing Dewan. Uh, especially given that a play of woof or woofed uh, somewhat protects the spot for Bavors or just doesn't block it immediately. So a Bavors bingo could come down and be pretty bad since I've already somewhat constricted the board. Uh, but the A and A leave is very good. The play I missed in this position was dwarf for 32. Very weird uh, formulation uh, for a word. It's a very tough word for me to spot at least. I'm sure others have similar uh, issues. Uh, this is 32 points, so four points sacrifice, but keeping E and O, which is a lot more balanced than just keeping uh, an O and an F, which I did with uh, Dewan. Um, but the F and O actually go decently uh, on the left of Dewan, so I was kind of lucky that this play wasn't necessarily a mistake because I do have some decent options with the O and the F. The O and the F go here as well. And it's just good to score nicely and uh, prevent S, S hooks from being super lucrative. So Dewan comes down, but Dwarf could have been better, potentially. Uh, Mike then plays Yip. So, so far all the plays are vertical. You will see a theme uh, in this game. Actually, 18 of 22 plays that were made this game uh, we're vertical, so we love to see it. Uh, I have a very nice draw here of IRSXY, so giving me a lot of um, flexibility here. Best play by probably somewhat of a landslide here is Fox. Uh, keeping the X, as I've said before in the beginning of the game, and especially on boards where there's not much going on, it's not that good of a, an idea. After four, I can play XIS next turn for 31. Uh, for 33, I mean. Uh, but that's nothing special. It's getting rid of an S. It's also potentially creating a big spot. And it's just much better to score the eight extra points and just try and build up for uh, a bingo in the next couple moves, uh, if possible. There isn't really much of a spot to play a bingo here, uh, but you can foresee maybe something ending in ES being possible or some play being made that opens a lane. And I know Mike to not be scared of um, making board opening plays, uh, though I hadn't played him in a very long time. Uh, he'd been somewhat out of the East Coast scene, at least for many, many years since he's on the West Coast. Um, but I did know him to be somewhat of an open board player. Um, so another vertical play. And Mike takes a really long time here and then plays Neb. So mostly what that told me, I thought, was that he had um, was that he had a blank or he had a really good rack and he wasn't sure if he was missing something. But also he could have a pretty poor rack and Neb just not be a great option for him and looking for something that's a little bit high, higher scoring. So it was an interesting decision. Turns out... Um, he actually had a bingo on this rack of B-L-E-N-D-E-S. So he provided me with some of his, uh, some of his racks this game, and this was one of them. Uh, he saw B-L-E-N-D-E-S, and the reason he took so long is because he 
he was wondering to himself if he was making it up. Turns out B-L-E-N-D-S is a valid word. And uh, I definitely would have uh, played that word, but some people just have blind spots. Mike is a, a very uh, strong player when it comes to knowing words and finding words, but sometimes just something looks really off to you and you just don't play it. So very lucky for me that he didn't play the bingo or blends. And here I thought my decision wasn't like great, but it was necessary. And my decision was to play buyers for 45 and thought maybe I would have buyer's remorse. Had to make that pun after this play since it opens up such a huge spot to play a word ending in S, uh, especially with the play of Neb, it's kind of suspicious. Uh, it might seems to be close to something most of the time. Uh, but actually turns out that playing for only 12 points, so a 33 point sacrifice with buy is almost worth it here. And I say almost because if you run a simulation with these two plays, they'll be pretty equal. Uh, however, with the inference that Mike is close to something, uh, which I think is a decent inference to make after the time he spent on Neb, given how, I mean, the board was, there's just really not much to do on this board. Um, there's not much to consider other than like a few plays. It's pretty easy to determine most of the time which is a better play. However, yeah, the play of buy sets up a nice lane Problem being, uh, it might be setting up a nice lane for Mike, uh, if he has an S, for example. Um, although I will still have the J column, but it just doesn't really seem to work out that well. Because if Mike bingos here for like say 80, and then I bingo back for like 75, I will be ahead by around uh, 30 points. But imagine I play a bingo here, it's just giving him all sorts of options. He might just bingo again. So just taking the points here with my 24 point lead, uh, just giving him one chance to play the S seems to be probably slightly better. Uh, but 32 or 33 point sacrifice could be, could be a thing. Uh, and here Mike does end up bingoing to his DELS, he draws CHI, very nice. He plays child, so another word, common word, plus E plus S, so blend. To blend day to blends child to child day uh, childs I think is just pronounced that way. Um, it's a youth of noble birth. Okay, or you know, uh, and this would have been pretty bad for me. He's taking twenty three point lead, but luckily for me, I draw a very nice uh, rack. This doesn't look nice necessarily at first, but I have a number of really high scoring plays here, uh, juiced for fifty four if I want to take away the triple, just juice if I want to keep slightly better and juicer, which is 62, and definitely worth playing here. Uh, just taking the points and taking a 40 point lead. Uh, Mike responds with wick, tying the game. And I draw very nicely again uh, to DE, I draw this. And if you notice the thumbnail of the video, uh, you know what I played here. And I played the ladies, which I thought was really funny, uh, just because Mike tends to wear a fedora uh, and we all know the old, uh, the old meme. Of course, Mike is a person that just wears a fedora. He's not a meme, but it is just still pretty funny <laughs> that I played Miladies uh, on someone wearing a fedora. Um, so enough of that. I played Miladies. It's the best bingo. He plays Mafia, struggling with some bad letters here. And I draw incredibly well once again uh, to just. Totally increase my lead here. I'm up 44 and I'm able to play Trigons for 83. Also the best play. Uh, and I'm up 127. But Mike doesn't go out without a fight. He finds the very nice overlap of Diatron. Of course, these words are just high probability words that everyone should be spotting. But you'd be surprised. So yeah, Diatron is a nice find with the four overlaps. And I'm at 46. And I'm a little bit worried here. I'm not very secure about my position. I feel like I'm in obviously great shape. I'm up almost 50 and it's my turn, but I don't have any good play that I see that deals with this gaping hole in the position, the C9 spot, and less dangerously, the E9 spot. Um, 
And yeah, if I score something this round or this turn and Mike is able to bingo here, he could be scoring a lot of points. He could be scoring 70, 80, maybe even 90 points um, on the C column. And yeah, that could be bad. I mean, he's taking a lead and it depends all, all depends on what I draw. So all in all, it's still uh, Ovum. That's still the play that you should make here. Uh, there's really nothing even uh, close to that. Keeping AOU with four O's unseen and a decent amount of vowels, definitely a terrible idea. So Ovum uh, looks like the play. It also even uh, gets rid of this spot, even though it's not really a big spot given there's only one I on scene, and most of the bingos you might imagine playing here are like IES bingos. Uh, but it is still a spot. So play over them. And in this position, Mike has A-G-H-O-R-S-T. And he takes a very long time here. He's trying to find something that gives him a really good chance of winning. Uh, he wants to create more threats in the position because he recognizes the C and the E columns and to a lesser extent this N, but he doesn't see a play that can maintain all of those threats at once. Uh, if he plays just something random here, uh, like harm, I can come back down potentially uh, with a long word here or a long word here, or even maybe even a word to this N if I want to be really like ultra defensive. And that is going to be very difficult to respond to given that Mike will be down uh, upwards of 50 points and pretty much nowhere to go. So he spent a while looking for such a play and he couldn't find it and ended up playing Hog. But there's actually a really awesome play in this position. Uh, so if you want to pause the video and take a look, I will give you a couple seconds while I take a sip of my water. Very meme episode today. Well, uh, the play is a bingo of stag horn to this end for 92 points, taking an 18 point lead with eight tiles in the bag. So that's the best he can do. It's still pretty much an even game after that, but this gives him a really good chance of winning the game. Uh, whereas this play of hog does not, um, I'm able to clamp down pretty well on the spot and score points with Pulau. Uh, to retake a almost 80 point lead. And in this position, Mike again has a very high scoring play, uh, which he misses, and he plays Azure uh, for 36. Uh, just hoping for something, maybe he could threaten something to this Y, to this N, down this E column, just hoping for something, knowing that it's not really a guarantee that he'll even be able to threaten anything. Um, but his play of Ursats for 78 on the surface looks great. It gives him the lead and leaves one tile in the back. However, uh, if you play enough Scrabble, you know that one in the bag is not necessarily a bad thing for somebody who has to empty the bag next turn. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to calculate uh, the end games. So I can even, if I, if I were in this position after Ursats, I would definitely just be looking at what happens after a play that I think is good and every single uh, one of the eight draws that I can have um, of one tile left in the bag because there are eight tiles unseen to me, one in the bag. So I can iterate through all of those eight possibilities and give myself a decent idea of how likely I am to win the game. Of course, you can miss things, uh, but we train ourselves to try and, and do this sort of uh, pre-end game uh, calculation because it does come up pretty often. Um, so leaving one in the bag, although it's great because you're not emptying the bag, uh, does give me an opportunity. I can just play through this E. Of course, there aren't very many high scoring tiles unseen, but if I score 20 points, I'll be up 20 points and Mike will have a full rack of seven and I'll have two, three or four tiles and potentially be threatening something and he might not be able to survive that. It's pretty unlikely he'll survive that actually. It might not even be possible. Uh, there might not be a single... Uh, there probably are a couple things that I could have where Ursatz wins, but it's it's very, very unlikely, is what I'll say. So he plays Azure, and in this position, uh, my of course, my uh, task 
was to win the game. And how do I win the game? Well, I have to try and figure out what Mike's threats are and neutralize them as best as I can. Uh, it's possible in this sort of position that there are multiple threats on multiple parts of the board that I can outrun. Uh, it is definitely a thing, but with these unseen letters, only four unique constants and three unique vowels, it makes it actually a lot easier. I basically uh, have, I just have a much easier job trying to figure out what was unseen. And usually in these positions with three in the bag, I'm really not able to find all the threats in the position. But in this position, I took my time and I saw that the only bingo from my perspective was egestion to this N. So all I needed to do was empty the bag and make sure that that egestion spot was blocked, which is what I did with Leno. Um, and after this, Mike played Testy, I played Graham, Mike played Toe, uh, which is a couple points worse than his, his best outplay, but no matter. Uh, and I won 455 to 397. And this was a decent victory. Um, but I really want to show you guys something uh, about this game that I should have uh, been able to figure out. Uh, but it's a very tricky thing while I enter the spread and the record. Uh, so 6 and 2 plus 15, I believe, after running by 58. Um, this is my new record after this game. But if we go back to the Leno position, you might guess it. Leno is not the best play. It's not actually even close to the best play. Uh, the best play here is an absolutely unbelievable drop of EN. So I can play EN here for 16, and I can play NE here. So there are a couple spots that I can score over 10 points with EN. And the point of this play is not what you might think. You might be thinking, okay, you're leaving one in the bag. You're up by 41, you're going up 57. You're trying to make sure that you have enough to outrun. So if we do some calculation, EN scores uh, 1650, I'll be up 57. Egestion uh, scores 80, so I'll be down 23 points. And Mike will either have a T or an N. Yeah, just a T or an N, because unseen uh, after egestion is uh, our NTT. So with an N, he can score, let's look, seven for want, uh, eight for gift. So let's make it 31 that I'm down. And if I play something um, like team or ream for 31 i will be losing this game by almost 10 points so why is n the best play well the trick here is that if mike does have the exact threat that i found the only threat in the position of egestion um then I will win the game anyway. But this play of EN actually, come to think of it, gives back other uh, potential threats like setting. So it's actually better not to do that. Uh, I think I might be able to, five, 75, I might still be able to outrun stuff like setting after this, but actually maybe not. So let's, let's take that away, sorry. I sort of misremembered. But yeah, let's play NE here for 12. So uh, not create a new threat. But yeah, the key here is that I know that I'm either drawing NT or TT on my two tile draw, which means that if Mike does play egestion, I will be able to play out with tolerate. So let me show you this on the quackle board so you understand a little bit better what I'm saying. So in this position, I just showed you guys playing EN opens myself up to losing here. Um, yeah, I'll lose by just a couple points after this. So that doesn't work. Sorry about that. But the point is that if I play NE and don't open a new threat and he plays egestion, which I can put actually all of the unseen letters. So I have A-E-L-O-R 
So everything except A-E-L-O-R. These are the unseen letters to me. And the only threat here is egestion, as described. So this is actually giving me all of the best plays with these 10 letters. So you see after egestion, the letters unseen, or the letters that remain are N-T-T. -T. And if I draw T-T, -T, I get tolerate for 77. And if I draw NT, I get ornately for 74. So no matter what, if Mike does indeed have egestion, I am drawing into a bingo of my own. And I might even draw into this bingo and he doesn't have egestion. But the problem is, that's not it. That's not the only thing that I needed to see in this position to be able to make the correct play. I needed to also see that there was no way for Mike to also set up a second threat. Let's say he plays ton and empties the bag and I have A-E-L-N-O-R-T and he's just blocked ornately. I have to see that he cannot set up another threat. Um, so not just this, but a play like, um, I think a play that's even more fighting for him is N-O for two. And after N-O for two, if I don't have ornately and I have this, I have to just block both. Um, oh, wait, no, not N-O. N-O is not good. Anyways, I just have to see that no matter what he does, he cannot set himself up for another, another possible bingo uh, that's unseen. I was thinking if he plays T-A, that's what I was thinking. Um, but if he does that, all I need to do is block because uh, no matter what I have, he's not, he's either not threatening a gestion or he's threatening, uh, or he is threatening a gestion. I just block it versus just blocking this if he has something like um, Genoise. So Tolerat. So if I have this rack, I just have to block Genoise and Soignier. So there's no way for him to set up another threat. And this is all possible. I can imagine him having the rack of egestion, knowing that there's no seven letter word. Um, I looked like a fool last time I said this, but I think there is a seven letter word in Collins. So I think if I put ton down, no, it doesn't work. Anyways, I think goetes is a word, G-O-E-T-I-E-S, um, in Collins, for those Collins watchers. Anyways, all I needed to do was figure out how do I respond to egestion? What are the ways that I can win even if he has egestion? And that way I can make this sick determination of, well, if he has egestion, I'm bingoing out. And if he doesn't, he cannot bingo. I'll just block next turn. So that is what I wanted to show you guys. It's totally insane. Uh, but I hope to be able to make plays like this more consistently uh, because, yeah, Scrabble is tough. Uh, Pre-end game positions are really tough. Um, and yeah, it turns out best play is playing any, not here, not where I showed you first, but somewhere else. And just saying like, sure, your move. If you have the only possible bingo, well, too bad for you. Uh, so yeah, really cool position. And that was round eight. And let me show you the final board. Uh, there we are. So... See, everything is the same, uh, but instead I played Leno, uh, Dusty, blah, blah, blah. We had that sequence I already showed you. And that was it. So really lucky that Mike uh, just happened to uh, miss two bingos he at least at some point knew. Um, Staghorn, I think he probably knew that word. It's just incredibly difficult to spot that to an N. Uh, and Blends, uh, just not being sure of it. And that gave me enough to uh, really take a nice lead and spring spring into victory. Uh, so yeah, um, pretty lucky game. And bringing me to 6-2 after the first game of day two. And I'll bring you guys round nine uh, tomorrow. And that is a whole nother cookie as well. So pretty much all the games I've played, there's something really interesting about them. Uh, but if there isn't, I'll probably do two episodes in the same video. But I found that the videos I was making were already pretty long, like 
uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, that's a long time. Um, and this is just one video for 30 minutes. So I don't know how I'm going to speed up, but I hope you guys are, are watching and aren't bored. In any case, uh, see you guys tomorrow, and thanks for watching.